Later, they came to a wooded area. Kevin curiously poked his head through a hole in a tree. He jumped back in surprise when a chipmunk appeared and chittered angrily at him. Gee, sorry! I was only looking. The boys looked around nervously. They could see, they could hear strange sounds and see strange shapes in the shadows of the trees. I d d don't like this p p place, Hatch stuttered in fear. M maybe we should g g go back. Ah, don't be a chicken, H, said Fly. H is another nickname for his words, for his friends. Fly always calls his, sometimes calls his friends by their nicknames he gives them, like Sometimes by their first, by the first letter of their names, or just a short, just a short word for their names. We've come too far to give up now, Hatch, Kevin said. Well, we shouldn't be too far from Mighty Eagle's cave now, considering how much we've been climbing. But then again, I've been, I've only been up here once with Dad, Chuck, and Bomb, but I can't really remember which way we went now. Well, hopefully we're even climbing the right mountain, Zack said. And by the way, that was Indigo talking just a minute ago. Eric was busily munching on some leftover pizza he had gotten out of his bag, and he was, as he walked on, he was so busy looking around that he forgot to watch where he was going. Eric, look out! Zack cried. But it was too late. Eric slipped and fell off a ledge. He tumbled down a hill in a cloud of dust. The, fo the, five, the other five boys hurried down after him. Eric, are you all right? Oy. I think so. Eric got up and dusted himself off. <gasps> Wait! Where's my food bag? Then the boys heard a chittering sound. They turned around in time to see two raccoons running off with the bag. Hey! That's mine! Eric yelled. Eric ran after them with Indigo and the others joining the chase. The two raccoons climbed up a tree and into a hole. The boys stopped at the foot of the tree and stared up at the hole. Let's get him, Fly said. No, Fly, wait! Indigo tried to stop him, but naturally Fly didn't listen. He started to climb the tree with difficulty at first. But he did manage to get to the hole. But just as he was about to take a look inside, he was rudely welcomed by a, pi a pine cone hitting him squarely on the forehead. Bonk! Ow! Rubbing his forehead, Fly tumbled back down the tree and landed near his friends. The, dang! Them coons is packing. Let me try, Indigo said. The little blue bird flew up to the hole. When he looked inside, a good bit away so he wouldn't get attacked by pine cones, his eyes widened. The two raccoons turned out to be the parents of three younger raccoons who were busily munching away on the remaining food that had been in Eric's bag. The raccoons family stopped eating and stared at Indigo. Understanding, the young blue bird nodded his head. He fluttered back down to his friends. Sorry, Eric. Turns out those raccoons need that food to feed their family. Oh, Eric said. He looked down. Then he slowly began to smile. Well, if they need it, then they can have it. Huh? All the remaining boys said. You seriously mean that? Zax asked. His eyes wide with surprise. Sure. Besides, they need it more than I do. 
They all stared at him in amazement. Not once had Eric ever shared the food he ate with anyone. So, this was quite a surprise for them. Well, let's keep on trucking, said Eric enthusiastically. Eric headed off. After a mo another moment of silence, the boys followed after him. Before long, they came to a rocky area. Indigo noticed that there were hanging rocks high above them. We have to be quiet, you guys, he whispered. One loud sound can cause a rock slide. A, 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 a rock slide? Hatch said, shivering. Kevin wrapped his wings around his beak. Zack took a deep breath and held it. The boys walked on as quietly as they could. Suddenly, Hatch could feel a sneeze twitching in his beak. Uh, uh, guys? Shh! All the boys shushed him. Guys, I think I, I have to. We don't have time for a bathroom break. Fly said, irritated. Fly whispered, irritated. No, I don't mean that. I mean, I gotta, I gotta, uh, ah, he's gonna sneeze. Zack realized. Uh-oh, Kevin said. Can he try to hold it in? Eric asked. Well, he could, Fly said. But that's more than likely to blow his brains out. Uh, ah! The boys shut their eyes and embraced for the loud sneeze. But shockingly, no sneeze came. Because Fly had managed to stop it by placing his feathered finger under Hatch's nostril. Nostrils. <gasps> Whew, it's gone. All the other boys heaved a big sigh of relief. <sighs> Eric chuckled. Well, that was a... Ah! The rest of the boys gasped. The rocks above them began to come loose. Oops, Eric said. Run! Indigo screamed. All six boys began to run as fast as they could. They were nearly at the exit when suddenly Zack tripped over a rock and fell hard on his stomach. Ow! <gasps> Zack! Indigo saw, saw his friend fall. Indigo, being a very loyal, protective, and caring young bird, threw down his stick and ran back for his friend. When he got to him, he helped Zack get back on his feet. The other birds had stopped to wait for them to catch up. Then suddenly, bigger rocks began falling all around them. The big boulders blocked their way out. Oh no! Hatch cried out. We're gonna get crushed! Kevin screamed. Looking around in desperation, Endo caught sight of a cave nearby. In there! Hurry! Indigo said, point, cried out, pointing to it. The six friends hurried inside the cave as more boulders rained down. Once they were inside, they covered their heads and shut their eyes tightly. After what felt like three minutes, the boys opened their eyes. The rock slide had stopped, but the way out was blocked by big, heavy rocks. Only a small opening let in some sunlight from the outside. <gasps> Eric gasped. We're... we're trapped in here! Zack realized in horror. Kevin hurried over to the blocked entrance and tried to push one of the boulders away. But it was much too heavy. Gah! Yeah! Jeez, it's 
it's even heavier than Terrence. Oh, I knew this was a bad idea, Zack said. We should have told someone where we were going, and now nobody knows where we are. Our families are going to be so worried about us, Indigo said. Especially mine. We'll starve to death, Eric said. Hatch hurried over to the small opening. Help! Someone help us! Help! It's no good, Hatch! No one's out there to hear us! Fly said. But Fly was wrong. Someone was out there to hear them. <clears throat> and who should those someones be? Then Marcus the Mouse, the fret the the same mouse Indigo had made friends with since the bird flu incident. And his younger sister May. May looked somewhat like Marcus, except she was a yellow color, her ears were a tad smaller, her tail was a bit shorter, and she had sapphire colored eyes. She also wore a small white flower on her head right next to her right ear. She and Marcus were out for a stroll when they heard Hatch's cries for help. Marcus's ears perked up. Listen, did you hear that? I thought I heard someone call for help. The two mice hopped over the fallen rocks. Hello? Is anyone there? Marcus called. Inside the cave, Indigo heard Marcus's voice and immediately recognized it. <gasps> it's Marcus! Indigo climbed, climbed up to the small opening. Marcus! It's me, Indigo! My friends and I are trapped in this cave! Then the young bluebird stuck his feathered hand out of the hole and waved it. Marcus saw it. Indigo? Marcus climbed up to the hole, looked in, and gasped in delight. Indigo! Wait, a mouse? Fly said. A talking mouse! Hatch said in surprise. So he's the one who helped cure everyone of the bird flu? Cool! Kevin said. Yep, that's me, Marcus said proudly. Just then, May popped up right beside her brother. So this is the bird you saved? May said, looking at Indigo, and then back at Marcus. Mm-hmm. Birds, this is one of my sisters, May. May, this is my friend Indigo and some of his friends. Nice to meet you, May, Indigo said, a little surprised at this at the sound and sight of another mouse talking. He pointed to each of his friends. These are my friends Fly, Zack, Kevin, Hatch, and Eric. Okay, Zack said, whispering to Indigo. So now there are two talking mice on this island? I get it looks that way, Indigo whispered back. Nice to meet you all. So what are you guys doing all the way up here? And how did you manage to get trapped in here? Well, we wanted to see how far we'd make it to the top of the mountain to see my eagle, Kevin started. But then I sneezed and accidentally caused a rock slide, Eric said, feeling a little guilty. And it blocked our way out, Hatch said. So we took shelter in here. Zack Zach added. Now we're stuck in here and... Thanks to me. No one in the village knows where we are. Marcus, do you think you can help us again? Of course I can. What do I have to do? Go, you and May, go get help, Zack said. Yeah. Oh, go get the angry birds. Yeah, Hatch said. They'll know what to do. Right. He, M Marcus turned to his little sister. 
Come on, sis. We've got work to do. Follow me. So the two mice scurried over the rocks and hurried back down the mountain as fast as they could. Marcus had been to the village many times due to visiting Indigo and the other birds on occasion. And he knew how to get there. He led the way with May following close behind. 